guys, it's Nelly. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a different video for you guys. It's a video that gets requested a lot here on my channel and I'm finally going to do it, okay? You guys broke me. I'm finally going to be filming this video. I get this requested quite often. Every time I post a beauty picture on the gram, I get tons of questions on how do I edit my pictures, what apps do I use, what filters do I use? So today I am going to be showing you guys how to edit your selfies like a beauty guru or like a beauty influencer or whatever you want to call us, okay? We're all friends here. So let's go ahead and jump right into it because it's a pretty self-explanatory video and I don't want to drag out the intro to move on because we all know I can do that. So I always get questions if I take my pictures using the camera or if I take my pictures using my iPhone and Honestly, most of my pictures are with my iPhone and a lot of beauty influencers They say that they take their pictures with their back camera and I don't know. Sorry. That's that's my front door camera A lot of beauty influencers will tell you that they take their pictures with this camera, but I'm not that kind of beauty influencer I don't have anybody to take my pictures for the most part. I'm solo YOLO. So I gotta do what you gotta do, so you have to make the front camera work the best. And this is an iPhone 7, I believe. But if you have anything after this model, your camera is probably better than mine, honestly. I personally prefer to take my pictures on Instagram. I feel like for some reason, the camera on Instagram is just so much better. Like the light just looks so much better. I don't use any of the Instagram filters when it comes to taking selfies, but I do use the camera. There's something about the Snapchat camera that just looks so good for makeup. The key to a good selfie is the lighting and the location. Location's not that important because you can always blur the background when you're editing your picture but definitely lighting is key. You need to have good lighting. I used to take my pictures in front of my studio lights and even though I have a fake hair on my face, <laughs> and though um, studio lights are great and you can definitely get, oh, hmm. even though studio lights are great and you can definitely get a great makeup selfie, I feel like when you take a selfie with natural lighting, is one more relatable and two for some reason when you edit the pictures it looks more realistic than when you do a studio light so I definitely recommend it for you to do daylight but I also completely understand if you take your pictures at night and if you're grinding in the middle of the night do what you gotta do girl just take the damn picture in the studio lights it's not that big of a deal when it comes to taking pictures you'll see right here in the little video that I'm gonna show you using snapchat that I don't typically angle my camera down like this that's a no-no for me because I have a round face and a chubby face at that I have to take it at an angle that looks flattering for my face and my features so I tend to go in a little bit up and I kind of tilt it forward and sometimes I'll even tilt it a little bit back you can see everything that I'm doing and if I have a really nice kind of sunlight beaming down on me I will take it from above because that just looks better so before you go ahead and snap that picture practice your angles practice what you like best see what you like see what you don't like what angle looks the best which way your makeup looks the most flawless and then once you have that picture then you can go ahead and edit it and make it even more perfect. But first, I definitely recommend you to spend some time learning your angles and the lighting that's going to work for you. And if you are going to use studio lights, make sure that you look at the, at the picture in a way that it's flattering with the light and that there is no shadows. So spend some time knowing that. Take a couple awful pictures. It happens. We all have awful pictures that we're just like, what the heck happened today? that's gonna happen and you're also gonna have days that you can't take a good selfie to save your life and that's okay too that's gonna happen but it's okay because tomorrow's another day and you can take a good selfie tomorrow so it's not a big deal how relatable is this meme by the way <laughs> love this so anyways once you have the pictures taken as you can see i don't really take a ton of pictures like I don't know, I, I see like some people, like I've seen some people take like 200 pictures of the same thing and I can't. Like if it doesn't come out good in the first like 
30 then it's just not gonna happen for me so i don't really take a ton but once you have taken your pictures as you can see mine have little hearts on them and the ones that have little hearts means that i like them and they're going to be sent to my favorites folder and then i can choose the one that i like from there and edit that one since you take so many pictures you want to make sure that you just pick the best ones and the ones that just catch your eye First. So this is a picture that we are going to edit for today. So once I have my picture selected, I know which picture I like. I'm going to go in to my editing apps, which you can see I have labeled editing and I have my apps in the order that I use them. This might be a little OCD, maybe a little Virgo-ish, a little creepy-ish, but hey, that's what I do. So I have them in the order that I use them. So I use Facetune, Snapseed, Sometimes I'll use Photo Toaster and then I'll finish with Visco. If I want to add some streaks and stuff, then I'll go into Afterlight. So let's go ahead and go into Facetune. That is the first app that I always use. And I'm going to load my picture that I have favorited. And I believe it's this one. Okay, so that is a picture that I'm going to be editing for today. I also like to go in order. I have seen some of these videos where they jump from one feature to the next and they go over here to the details, but then they go over here to the tones. I can't do that. I have to go in order. I just feel like the pictures look better when you go in order. I don't know you guys. My brain works a little weird. So on Canvas, you can flip the picture, rotate the picture. Sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes if I don't like how my face looks in this angle, I will flip my picture and it looks a little better. So for today, I like the way that it is. So I am just going to leave it like that. Next, I'm going to go into the whiten tool. And the only thing that I do with the whiten tool is I will whiten my teeth just a little bit and see before and after. And then if I have anything white, I will whiten that as well. Especially since I have my hair dark now, I think it looks really pretty when you do like super white and then the dark hair. So I will whiten my bra a bit because it's a little pink. And then if you have, like I said, if anything's white, you can whiten that. Now I'm whitening the wall. Now you see how I got some of that white in my shoulder? I'm going to go into the erase and I'm going to erase that shoulder. So if you look at smooth, it has two options. It has smooth and then it has smoother. I never, ever, ever go into smoother. If you go into smoother, you are going to look plastic. You are going to look fake and you don't want that. You want to try to make your makeup pictures look as realistic as possible or your selfies as realistic as, as possible. So I usually just do smooth. And another thing is you don't want to like go like this with your finger, just lightly tap it in. First thing that I'll do is I'll start smoothing my arms a bit because I feel like they sometimes look a little rough. So see, that's the before and that is the after. And I zoom in to my face and I see what I need to smooth there. I usually smooth over just if I have any breakouts. So I have some breakouts on my chin, so I'll smooth that over, but then I'll show you guys how I fix that with another tool. And then you see right here on my nose how I have a little bit of texture. I would go ahead and smooth that. I usually smooth my inner corner because I feel like I have so many little lines and so many little creases there that it doesn't look as good. So see, that's the before and that's the after. I just kind of smoothed it a little bit. I'm not smoothing my little lines because people want to see that. People want to see your imperfections. You are not perfect. I'm sorry, you're not. So leave your lines, leave a little bit of pores. It's okay. Trust me, I have been there. I have been that person that like wants to erase everything from my skin and make my pictures look like they're from like a magazine, but it's not relatable. So yes, so I'm gonna go ahead and smooth that and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other eye. And then I'm gonna come to the forehead and I have a little bit of texture above the brow. So I'm gonna smooth that. I'm gonna smooth a little bit of the middle of my forehead and in between my brows because I have really dry skin in that area and it tends to get just a tiny bit like creasy. So I'll, let's see the before and the after. It barely looks like we did anything, but there's still an overall smoothness there. Next comes the details. Details is something that I love to use, especially on my eyes. I love, love, love to use the details. I also use details on any jewelry that I have. 
So I'm gonna go zoom in really close to my eye and I'm going to apply some of that detail in the actual eyeball. So look at the before and look at the after. It just kind of brings it out to life. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other eye. And then sometimes I'll do a little bit to the inner corner highlight and look at that. Bing! It just brings it back up. I am pretty happy with that for my detail area. Okay, next we're gonna go into reshape. Now, reshape is another one of those tools that Facetune has that can get crazy, crazy, uh, very quickly. So use it lightly. You have reshape, refine, and resize. I usually, for the most part, only go into the refine section of this. And the only thing that I do here is I go in by my lips and I kind of drag the outer corner of my lips. I drag it up upwards just a little bit. And the reason for that is because I have a lip that just, see, like, I don't know if you can tell, but this side of my lip goes down a little bit more. And sometimes you can see that in the pictures. So I like to just go into the refine tool and just drag the outer corner up just a little bit. So here's the before and here's the after. It's very little, but it makes your mouth just look a little bit more like pointy. I don't know, I just like the way that it looks. Okay, so I am happy with that. We're gonna go into patch. So I have a little breakout right here. So I'm going to patch that. If you don't know what the patch tool is, which I'm sure you guys probably do know what it is because it's probably the most popular tool that this app has but this patches over any little breakouts that you may have so i have a big one right here and it showed on the picture so i'm just going to patch that with that tool so here's the before and here's the after and that's it this one that i have here i don't really care for i'll just go in and i'll smooth it because i don't really mind that one i just really do that to like the really big blemishes so that is the patch tool now my favorite tool from the whole thing is the tones tool here you can do so many different things you can go in to the like a vanilla shade and you can like make that a highlight i'm not going to do that today because i don't have a highlight on this particular look is all matte but what i am going to do is i am going to take a black and I always go over my lashes. This is just gonna make the lashes a lot cleaner. I just love it when you can tell where the lashes and liner meet. I like for everything to be nice and flawless. So I just run that through the lash line a little bit to make it nice and flawless. So here is the before and here is the after. And then also, as you can see, you have some whiteness right there. I'm just gonna quickly cover that as well with the black. If you get a little bit, ooh, See, like I got a little bit there, just go into the erase and just erase it and also erase the eye just in case. Now, I also like to go in with a shade that's lighter than my eyes. So I usually go in with a light brown shade that's kind of in between my eye color, but it's just a little bit lighter. And I'm gonna run this in my eyes just to make them a little bit lighter. See how it just kind of lightened that up a little bit? And you can even go in with a little bit of the white and lighten that up a little bit. Okay, I went a little crazy there, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. Okay, if I look at the eyes, boom, boom, boom. Okay, so that is the tones, and I think that is pretty much it for face tone. So I'm gonna save that to my camera roll. So I'm gonna take that picture on Snapseed, and here I only go to tune image, and I adjust the brightness. So if the picture is a little dark, you can make it really bright. I usually only do a little bit because I like a more dark feed. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to 10. And then I also go into saturation and I always put it at five. So that's the before and that is the after. And that is everything that I do on Snapseed. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on Snapseed, let me know because I can definitely show you guys with a different picture because you can do so many different things in Snapseed. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this copy. And then I'm gonna go into Photo Toaster. Not a lot of people talk about Photo Toaster. I really like it. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys how I use it. So in Photo Toaster, the only thing that I do here is up here, you're gonna see a little kind of like paint brush. You're gonna go ahead and click that and you're gonna click on lightning brush sometimes when you wear like really heavy lashes they kind of make your under eyes like it just shadows down to your under eyes especially if you're taking a picture so what i like to do is i like to take this tool and as you can see right here you have a little sun and then you have a little moon the sun is going to lighten things up and the moon is going to make it a little bit darker i like to go in with a little sun and i only do it on the areas where i have a little bit of shadow under my eyes and that just makes it just a little bit nicer and brighter. So here's the before and here's the after. It didn't do a ton, but again, it just makes everything look a little bit more sculpted and more seamless. So that is everything that I do there. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that to my photo library. Next up we have Visco. I'm gonna open it up on Visco and usually I like the e-filters. I actually bought all of the filters just because I wanted options, but I always find myself using the e-filters and let's go ahead and find that. Okay, so these are the filters that I like. They give me that little vintage -y vibe that I have been going on in my feed. So this is it um, for today i think i'm gonna go into i like that one okay i think i like e3 the best so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bring it down whoop, i'm gonna bring down the filter and i only use it at 6.0 only halfway you don't want it all the way because if you want it all the way then it looks a little bit too fake so i have it at 6.0 and then i'm going to go into the exposure and i always bring down my exposure just a little bit i don't go past 0.5 again it also depends on the picture but for the most part i always keep it at 0.5 for a little bit higher so i think for today i'm going to keep it at 0.2 i like that Next, I'm going to go into the contrast. Now you can make it really contrasty or you can bring it down. I don't think, I think I'm going to bring it down to 0.5 or should I bring it up? Okay, I'm going to put it up to just 0.2, just a little bit of contrast, not too much. I'm going to next go into sharpen and I'm going to sharpen it just a little bit. 0.5, that's good. And now the saturation, if you feel like you need more or less, you can definitely bring it up. Now, I think I like the saturation that I have now, so I'm just going to leave that at zero. Now, the tone, I don't touch that. The white balance, I don't touch that. The skin tone, now you can make your skin look a little bit pinkier, or you can make it look a little bit more yellow. For this look, I think I'm going to make it just a little bit pinky, and I'm going to put it at 0 0.5. So that's that. And then here, you can also go ahead and add a grain if you would like. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. That is that. I'm going to go ahead and save that and just hit save to camera roll. And then you can just go ahead into your Instagram account and you can open it up and you can upload. Another thing that I want to show you guys is streaks. So open the app after light and go to the picture that you're going to upload and click on use. You're going to go into this little square thing and you're going to click where it says dusty and there you have all of the different grains that you can use and then you can bring it down or up. If you want to make the picture really dirty, I actually really like this one. So I think I like that. And that's it. I'm just going to click save and I'm going to save it to my camera roll. And then you can just go to your Instagram and upload it. So that is pretty much it, you guys. That is how I edit my Instagram selfies. That is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Please don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Like and share, 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 you guys. We're so close to 100K. I can see. <laughs> so that is going to do it you guys i love you thank you for watching and i'll see you guys on friday 9 30 a.m eastern time with a brand new video what was that brand <laughs> i love you guys bye